I might have made a mistake when I bought this cross stitch kit from the thrift store. They're always a gamble because they were owned by someone else first and you don't know what they did with it. I'm Michelle. This is my romantic tangle. And when I found this Jan Lin kit at Goodwill, I was delighted. This is exactly the style of thing I want to stitch. It was only $1.99 and I thought it was still factory sealed. There was a bit of a line at the checkout and as I was standing there holding it, I started to have second thoughts and spent just a couple of minutes debating whether it was sealed or not. And what actually gave it away is hidden under what I thought was the bundle of unsorted floss is one of those plastic floss organizers. This did not come with the kit. And if you look at it closely enough and feel with your fingers, you can tell someone had cut the top seam open and then it's wrapped a strip of clear packing tape over it. And I want to be clear, no one was deceptive with this. Someone donated it to the thrift shop. When you buy cross-stitch kits from Goodwill or St. Vincent's or wherever, it is always buyer beware. I have seen some really ridiculous leftovers being sold as a new cross-stitch kit. I decided for $1.99 I was going to gamble. The cashier told me that I could return this. And I asked her to clarify if that meant I opened it and the chart wasn't in there. I could bring it back. She said yes. That seems too good to be true. But I suppose I could have gone right out and opened it in my car to see. I decided I wanted to bring it home and make a video because I have had this happen before. I bought a kit from a different thrift store years ago and it was sealed up so well. The only reason I figured out that someone had been into it before me was that they'd subbed out linen for the Ada. And it had both the linen and Ada in it when I opened it up. So the gamble I took was I can see the floss. I can see the finishing stuff. If I kind of carefully peek in through the side, I can see the Ada. But is the pattern going to be in here? That's the one thing I really need. And I've been waiting to open it to do it in the video because I wanted to show you what it looked like when I bought it. We'll see what's going on with this. And they've actually, the top of that is taped to the plastic. And get this out of here. Here we go. A Walk in the Clouds. I think that's a movie title. And some numbers. Oh, this is looking promising. And there's the chart. So I have the chart. I have the cardboard and foil and braid and what looks like the most horrific metallic floss ever and someone has sorted these I mean at least they've got them all separated for me and I can decide the colors from there maybe maybe not this is going to be a process but these are some really cute little bu butterfly floss organizers I'll use those for something and it looks like well, I don't know what they did there. There are nine Santas, and this is not divided into ninths. So maybe there was originally a second piece of fabric? But these seem to be... Huh. I, I don't know what they did there. And all it says is it contains 14 count Ada. It doesn't say how much, but... For my $1.99, I got the floss, I got at least some of the fabric, I got the chart. Turns out this was a very good deal. It is always possible when you buy a secondhand cross stitch kit that the fabric won't be there or I have seen them for sale where literally all they had was the picture and the cardboard in the plastic 
for a lot more than I paid for this one. So if you are buying from a thrift store or an estate sale or any place where somebody has already owned that kit and they are not selling it to you with a guarantee, look carefully at the packaging. Don't assume that everything is there because it might not be. And like I said, I don't think that when someone opens a kit in their own stash and tapes it shut again, you're just keeping things from falling out. You're keeping it nice in your own stash. If you're selling it on a D stash site or on eBay, then you need to represent it as what it is. But that wasn't the circumstances for pur purchasing these Santas. These are exactly the sort of thing I want to be stitching. So I am glad that I went a little bit against my better judgment and bought them despite the fact that it looked like someone had been into them. Let me know, have you ever bought an incomplete kit from a thrift store? Was it a problem? My best incomplete kit ever was a Dimensions Gold collection that didn't have any of the packaging. It just had the chart and the floss bundles and the fabric, and that turned out to be All Is Calm, which was a long discontinued kit. So I did great on that one. And that's one of the reasons that sometimes I'm, so I'm happy to take a gamble. Thanks for watching. I'm Michelle. This is my Romantic Tangle. I hope to be back with you with more videos soon, and I really hope I get my voice back all the way before long.